scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Everybody shout, I need an encounter. This is the foundation. People had dreams. Not, I don't mean dreams of, I'm a champion. Dreams of, I am pressing into God. You would see people who would get born again. The lifespan of catching fire was one week. After seven days, I'll never forget. You remember a Jimmy, one gentleman who used to sleep on the bridge. Remember that man? That man got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. He was addicted. He would sit down inside chapel from morning till night. He was sleeping under the bridge in flyover. That's the kind of fire if you were born again your born again had to be genuine there was a strict system you pass through from being born again straight there was a brief session and then filled with the holy ghost you you will pray we will hear if we don't verify we'll do it again you had to be praying in flying tongues and there was a system that engaged your spirit everybody around you was too serious for carnality to find expression you talked about women, you'll be alone. Because everybody was searching the Bible. Our discussions. Was he Hades or Gehenna? That was our discussion. But you hear people who just got born again. I'm challenging us. This is the reason why several people may not find God. Ministry. Ask Ejimi how many people spoke to me about churches and branches. You remember, sir? Oh, man of God, PFN were willing to give us an auditorium, train pastors just to come and start a church. And I went back and God said, no, you will die. We were so obsessed with seasons. We denied ourselves certain doors, even though they were open, to wait for seasons. But right now, everybody wants glorification, wants lifting. Hmm? A lady of 25, under pressure, Time is passing. 25. A brother of, of, of 27. In, in four months, you have asked 20 ladies out. What is wrong with you? Are we together? Look at pastors. Pastors, don't, don't, they don't press into God. You never see them having retreats. They are watching football. They are traveling. They are doing ministry. What ministry do you have outside of his presence? Are we together? Daytime was for study. Nighttime was for ministry. That's what we did. I know how people run away if they even call you pastor. Pastor this. We, we, we run away from it. But some of us quarrel everybody. You are calling me what? What did I hear you call me? John, me? The day you try that thing again, I will curse you. God truly found our hearts. We loved him with everything. Are we together? That time, the cooler ministry was not for relationship. The cooler ministry was to propagate encounters. Because we're tired, laboring there. Sometimes they will lock and our sisters will carry cooler. It was not that they were looking for husband. It was their contribution. The ministry of Dorcas. 
genuinely for fire. Please, Koinonia, hear me. I'm telling you the truth from the depth of my heart. When you find God, you find wealth. When you find God, you find relevance. When you find God, you find everything. Are we together? Yes. My first challenge for us as we attempt to build this series is return to the place where you seek God. Write this down. What is an encounter? An encounter is not necessarily a vision. An encounter is not necessarily a a supernatural transportation to the realm of heaven. That's not what I'm talking about necessarily. An encounter, listen, is an experience you have with God that furnishes the reality of his person. The reality. An encounter is God making himself real to you. Revealing his presence to you. Whether in, a, in the secret place, whether as you labor in the study of the word, are we together? People who were non-Christians, when they got born again in two weeks, because of the atmosphere of encounter, their lives changed. That's why people like Mama came. And you see what God is doing with him. Today he has become a great and mighty man of God. Encounters. Are we together? Pregnant women had testimonies that while teaching was going on, their children would just keep quiet. No movement, no pushing. Until it was time for prayers. Let me tell us the truth. There is too much distraction. This is what stops the voice of God. This is what stops a lot of things. We are distracted. I'm not necessarily talking, of, when I talk of distraction, I'm not necessarily talking of maybe immorality like drunkenness necessarily. We are distracted looking for things around God and not himself. We are studying the seven rivers of power. Why not study him as a person? We pride ourselves at these things. So you find out that people mock themselves with messages. We come and preach messages we do not have the experience to defend. Is God speaking to us? Please, if you're a pastor here or you're in ministry, listen to me. Return to the place of encounter. That's your greatest publicity. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. Lead me, Lord, I will. Lead me, Lord, I will follow. Lead me, Lord, I will go. You have called me, and I will answer. to reveal his glory God desires listen he did not just save us to take us to heaven please I'd like you to pay attention to what I'm sharing with you God did not save us just so we can become Christians his intention was to make us revelations of his glory write that word glory down the word glory is from the Hebrew word kabod the Greek is doxa and the expression of the word glory is the essence of a man. Whatever makes that man who he is, his wealth, his wisdom, his intelligence, is called his glory. So God's desire, the eternal counsel of God, is that Christ becomes a reflection of the glory of the Father. The church, the ecclesia, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, now becomes the revelation of the glory of the Christ. 
Christ has reflected the glory of the Father in his death, burial, and resurrection, his exaltation. What is left right now is for the church to align so much with the Spirit that we become perfect reflectors of the glory of Christ. Another word for glory is the possibilities of a man. A man's glory is the extent of his possibilities. So God wants us to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his possibilities. Glory can never be appreciated until it is revealed. Until it is revealed. Until it is made manifest. The word became flesh. Right? The word locked up in the realm of the spirit became flesh. And dwelt among men. He says, and we beheld his glory. God desires for his glory to be seen. He desires for his multifaceted dimension to find expression in every territory. But that dimension, the conduits, the custodians of the glory of God are not things, not handkerchiefs, not Goya oils, human beings. Are we together? God's predeterminate counsel is for every one of us under the sound of my voice to become perfect reflectors, manifestors of a divine life, a divine reality that transcends this realm. The glory of God is a revelation of everything that makes God God. So when miracles happen, that's the glory of God finding expression. Are we together? Yeah. When signs and wonders happen, and some, in Isaiah 40, the Bible says that God desires, we were made for his glory, that all flesh will see it. But there is a pathway that brings the sons of light to glory. This is what I am teaching us. I really desire that our lives become limitless conduits, communicators of all the dimensions that can be in Christ. So when men look at you, you are half man and half something else because you are a communicator of a reality that is beyond this realm. Your life is supernatural in every way because you are functioning from a realm, a possibility and a reality. You are reflecting a man who is not limited, only limited by our disalignment. Is God speaking to us? John chapter 2, the wedding in Cana. Let's look at verse 11. The Bible stated something very important there. Is God blessing us already? Tonight's teaching is going to challenge us. John 2, let's just look at verse 11. Everyone please read. One, two, read. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. And did what? Stop. Hold on. It says Jesus used miracles as a conduit to manifest his glory. When he performed these miracles, it was a turning of water to wine. Are we together now? The Bible says in doing that, because he aligned to the Father so much to an extent that the Father could find expression through him to do an impossible thing, he said he manifested forth his glory. As a result, his disciples believed him. Let me translate this to you. As a result, the convictions of men over God became stronger. You know why our convictions are very small? There are very few dispensers of the glory of God. Are we together? There are very few people who are truly prototypes of the possibilities that can be in God. You see the wisdom of men like ordinary people. Their intelligence like ordinary people. What everybody is crying about is what you cry about. There is nothing supernatural about your life. You are not a dispenser of the glory. Your words are empty. As empty as any philosopher's words. No backing. No authority. No power. No government. No throne. Nothing backs you. This beginning of miracles. He said, did Jesus. Just verse 11. And he said he manifested his glory. And as a result, the disciples believed. They believed. The 
The essence of the faith life is not just to go to heaven. The essence of the faith life is not just to capture us from sin to become heaven bound. God's ultimate desire that will never change is that he will find a people who can be an expression of all that Christ is. It is God's desire that his multifaceted possibilities, all the dimensions that make him God, he wants it to find expression here. His healing, his wealth, his miracles, the possibilities, everything. So Christ is our model. The same way Christ aligned to reflect the glory of the Father. Right? In John 17, don't turn there, we'll turn there later on. Jesus was speaking and he said, Father, he said, now glorify thy son to the end that thy son will glorify you by reflecting your glory. In theology, we call it the reflection principle. Where you reflect the glory of your superior and the one below you is the one who reflects your glory. You never reflect your glory. You reflect the glory of the one you submit to. So Jesus reflects the glory of the Father. The church reflects the glory of the Son. The systems reflect the glory of the church. This is the eternal counsel of God. But there is something wrong because our understanding does not permit God to go with us to that extent where he can reflect his glory to us. So there is little of healing, little of prosperity, little of alignment, little of result from prayer, little in a congregation of 5,000 people, you have two testimonies. It's a shame to the revelation of the glory of God. I know we clap about it and we thank God, but honestly, it is a shame. Are we together? Yeah. God's glory cries for expression. He wants everything that he is to find expression through our lives. But the question is, are you willing to let your life become a conduit of that glory? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. When there was a storm, everybody waited for the arrival of Jesus because his arrival was a revelation of the kingdom. The kingdom had come. Right? When he stepped into a house, they knew there was a miracle. Who, what do we expect when you show up? Trouble? Blessings? If I shake your hand, Pastor Femi, come please. If Pastor Femi shakes my hand, should something not change in my life? But does it happen? You see the reason why they don't value your shake? Because it never produced any result. The last time you prayed for somebody, they begged you and said, pray for me. You prayed and nothing happened. You met them after a long time. You said, any result? You said, absolutely nothing. I don't know what you did to me, but from that prayer, my life just knows dive. There is no manifestation of the glory. There is an extent of glory by the grace of God that we have been able to manifest. And this is what is responsible for everyone coming to sit down. You are coming to behold a dimension of the glory. Are we together? When there are healings, there are miracles, when the word of God comes and it's power to transform, it is a revelation of glory. When a barren woman all of a sudden gets healed, is a revelation of a dimension of God. When you master the laws of kingdom wealth and in an economy that is nose diving, your life is rising up like the ark of Noah. Something is different about your life. That's the revelation of the glory of God. The idea is not just heaven. The idea is a flawless life based on our alignment to the Christ. Is God speaking to us? Jesus is the revelation of the Father's glory. And the church was designed to be the revelation of the glory of the Christ here on earth. The ecclesia, the church, the Catholic church, the universal church. We were designed by God to be the reflectors. In other words, anytime people need to see Jesus, they should look for a Christian. Did you know that our presence should stop the frustration in the earth? Because we are the representatives of the government of Christ. So in every territory, 
when there is any challenge when somebody sees a jimmy they say thank god what dimension of the glory of god has been committed to him they are sure that that dimension will be dispensed and there will be solutions but we are largely part of the problem in the earth and this is why our voices are not heard as the church of god we are part of the many world's religions nothing supernatural about our lives they shake you somebody sleeps on the same bed with you demons oppress him the way they have been oppressing him from his room before he came there is no presence of the divine life there is no presence of an atmosphere oh come on no it should never happen that way the bible says there is this treasure where not in heaven in earthen vessels there is this treasure in earthen vessels careers of the divine life communicating something very deep and very spiritual that is who you are if you think you are just a christian who is should just be planted you know to a church taking communion on sunday praying during prayer meetings you will short circuit your understanding and the revelation of christ in you everyone say in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus my life must reflect the glory the power the wisdom the life the possibilities of christ jesus yes when people are stranded the moment you show up you bring a reality your speakings right it says my heart is indicting a good matter yea i speak of excellent things it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer so that when you come up and you begin to speak i never expect to speak and you say wow that was an interesting contribution no because i'm speaking by the spirit are we together yes this is the foundation of true spiritual growth the rewards of an encounter with christ the glory of god finds greater space in and through your life you become a blessing everybody wants to be around you because that's what happened to jesus christ they don't have to know you let me tell you one way you know the glory of god is on you you become what the bible calls delightsome have you heard that word delightsome delightsome does not mean beautiful and men are following you for marriage or or you have money in your pocket and ladies want you to marry them into a life of peace that's not what i'm talking about that there is something on your life it's magnetic people come to sit down close to you and say i don't know why i've never shared this with anybody but there is a challenge in my life there is the glory of god dogs are a revelation of his person in you this series is meant to uh, to not just challenge you but also activate something in your life are we together say i'm a dispenser of the glory of god say one more time i'm a dispenser of the glory of god john 11 verse 40 jesus said something remarkable that was the story of the resurrection of lazarus from the dead john 11 let's look at verse 40 please read it together everyone is projected for time's sake one to read jesus said unto her said i not unto thee that if thou would believe thou should what if thou will believe the key to experiencing the glory of god in your life is your conviction do you believe do you believe that you can see jesus said it himself he said if you can believe nothing will stop you from seeing my glory you can see my glory in prayer you can see my glory in signs and wonders if you believe the word believe is a very interesting word because it's not just the word agree it's the word conviction you can it's not just an awareness like i agree with you but i am persuaded about this reality pastor femi is a pastor of rema i am persuaded i'm not trying to agree i i know it is true and nobody can convince me otherwise that's what it means to believe faith now becomes the action you take based on that conviction 
Are we together? Jesus himself said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So if I believe, my body can become a superconductor of the anointing and the presence of God. And the same way, brothers and sisters, if I have tuberculosis and I come close to a Jimmy, what will happen to him? Please answer me, what will happen to him? We call them communicable diseases, right? Because they can be transferred. It's not whether he agrees with me or not. I am a carrier of that disease. He just needs to come to the atmosphere. And he's implicated. He gets tuberculosis. Are we together? That means I can carry divine health. And come close to him. I've not prayed for him. And make it communicable. I can carry divine wisdom. Are we together? And you come and greet me. We talk for five minutes. You live with a level of intelligence you cannot account for. I'm not just talking of praying for people. I'm talking of them being implicated by the atmosphere you have created. Your alignment has created an atmosphere that does not leave people the same. So someone does not even know he's sick. It is your atmosphere that shows him he's sick. When he comes... He leaves and says, my goodness. So this thing I've been carrying is pain. I thought everybody has it. Hi. Are we together? Years ago, one gentleman was helping me wash my clothes. He was so happy. He just soaked the clothes. As soon as he soaked the clothes, we lift it up. That's how the power of God just carried him. That was the end of that washing for a very long time. The Bible says handkerchiefs. Right? You believe that? Acts 19. Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Peter. Handkerchiefs and aprons. It's not this thing we do in church where we just call people out and wave handkerchiefs. Mm -mm, solve problems. Solve real life problems. If you can wave it like that, then speak over the person's financial crisis. Bring it to an end. That's authority. That's a sign that there is a government that backs you. So someone comes and tells you, 11 years we've been buried. You say, it doesn't matter. They say, why? Because triplets are coming. Are you getting the point? Oh, you can be that confident. That's how to become a blessing to people. And so they say, please, how can we locate mama? Because they know that their own is just to find where you are. When they find you, even if you are passing. When prophet Samuel met Saul, he said, come inside and I will show you everything in your heart. That's a dispenser of a reality. When people are sick and they see you, do they get excited? Or do they just thank you for visiting and grieving with them? Are we together? Listen, we must rise from the realm of counseling to miracles, to results. Don't just counsel people. It's all right. We live in a generation where who doesn't know times are hard to a point where when people see you they said you prayed for me eh, jimmy i don't know what you said but from monday till sunday i was receiving testimonies of financial breakthrough as it was happening to me it was happening to my mother please have come again men are implicated because of the atmosphere you carry please hear me i'm not motivating you these are realities that God wants you to walk in. This is how you become the light of the world. It's not just by talking and saying I'm a Christian. You know why our, our worth in Christ is very small as far as people interpret it? Because we pray so much, but our result is very little. Hallelujah. That's why we share testimonies. These testimonies are a revelation of what the glory of God has done in the lives of people. There are certain possibilities that is granted us access to and they have produced results in the lives of people. So you see incurable diseases going by another possibility. Say after me, all things are possible. Say it, all things are possible. But not for everyone. Yes, you must agree with this. All things are not possible for everyone. Your possibility is a measure of the glory of God that can find expression in you. 
Are we together? That is why encounter is so important. Because encounter is the spiritual activity that truly builds faith in you. Listen, faith comes by hearing. Do you hear what you read? Answer me please. Do you hear what you read? When I read the Bible, do I hear anything? That means beyond this reading, there is a reality that should find expression in my spirit. Mama, come and collect phone. Did you hear me? So it's not that you were rebellious. If I'm talking and you didn't hear me, will you just stand up and come? So many people say, I don't know if I had God or not. You didn't hear. Are we together? Because his voice is louder than the voice of every devil. And you can come and collect it. Mama, give me this phone. You had it. This happens in the place of encounter. You don't roam around this noisy valley of this world and expect to hear God with clarity. Your landlord is making noise. Your village is making noise. Wickedness making noise. Carnality is making noise. You won't hear him that way, brothers and sisters. Are we together? I really am challenging us. Another thing that I think is responsible for people not paying attention to God is we have this idea that paying attention to God is a waste of time in terms of achieving our destiny. I don't know who deceived us with that understanding. That, please come. Two of us start out on a spiritual journey. Look at me, everyone. Two of us start out on a spiritual journey. Are we together? And then this guy keeps moving. Just move slowly. Right? And then I feel I am behind. Because that guy wants to start a church. He wants to marry. He wants to move forward. He wants to do this. And you are here with God. We call this delay. We call this waste of time. And sometimes you say, God, honestly, this you are always talking to me. I don't want you to waste my time. Let me tell you the thing with God. When he's done with you, you will not walk. That's the thing. No. The Bible says immediately Jesus entered the boat. They were at the other side. No process. Immediately. As soon as he entered the boat, they appeared there. That's the God of all flesh. So there are people who started their journey. They didn't wait to find out from God what are the rules of the engagement. They just got up. I must make it. My share in this life. What is my own is my own. And all these foolish things we keep talking. And they have marked time somewhere in life with six children now. Whereas somebody who they were looking at as wasting time, now he's walking on the wings of the spirit. Moving as if Satan does not exist because he stayed to master the art of war before he started moving. It pays to stay with God. The fastest way to make impact is to stay with God. Not to look for endorsement. Not to print invitation cards and say, Jimmy, invite me. I'm a very intelligent entrepreneur. Invite me. Koinonia, give me the mic. Let me lead praise and worship once. And even you, you will know that Kai, God has children. No. We will never give you mic in Jesus' name. Because it means you are deficient in training. Listen, never be ashamed if others go and leave you. You are actually running. You don't know. Elijah told Ahab, saddle your ass and go. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And then instead of him to run too, he waited. And the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him. He guarded his loins and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel. Do you want to stay with God and let him file you and you get up and move in power? Or do you want to join this rat race people are doing in life? They take two steps and mark time there. So there is a pile of people who started their journey but cannot move because they do not understand the art of the war. I make up my mind to wait. I make up my mind to wait. Are we together? So that by the time I start moving, I will move at a speed and at a pace that will grant me capacity to do much for the kingdom. Moses was about to move, but he said, Lord, do not send me. 
I know that the people need to get to the promised land, but I'm also aware that there are all kinds of obstacles. Lord, don't send me. I have questions to ask you. I like Moses. Moses asked God questions. The same thing Gideon did. Gideon said, you are sending me to go and defeat the Midianites. Oh Lord, you are king, but I'm a man. Let me ask you intelligent questions. Prove to me, oh. Look, stay in the secret place and ask God every question. What happens when my finances dry up as a man of God? God, give me the secret now. Not when it happens there. What happens when somebody is about to crash under the hands of the enemy and I cannot see it? And he shows you the mystery. When you take them like keys, you can tell the gate of destiny be opened. And the moment you start moving, you move like a general in the kingdom. When others stand, there is a strategy that you can find expression. We will wait upon the Lord. For in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And our strength shall be restored. As we wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. I'll share with you just one key tonight. The key I want to share with you. I'll share with you many other keys. When you want to grow spiritually and become a reflector. The first key is death. John 12. John 12. Let's read 23 and 24. John 12. God is raising mighty and powerful people in this place. John 12. Now watch this. There is a relationship between death and glory. Please look at me. Never forget what I told you. There is a relationship in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of power, in the realm of impact, in the realm where men do business with God, there is a relationship between death and glory. Years ago, a lady met me and shared with me a dream. And that dream was going to launch her into a season of dealings with God. And I knew it was not going to be an easy time for her. But I spoke with her, I told her, grace for you. And the next two years or so of that lady's life would be times of intense pruning and testing and maturing. But after that time, God brought a vessel that was worthy of honor. The Bible says, Jesus, not an angel, answered them saying, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be what? So we're talking about glorification. The time has come for you people to know how powerful my father is. The time has come for all of you to see the multifaceted dimensions of the might of Yahweh. You've heard about him. Your father's told you. You are about to see it now. Next verse. But for this to happen, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is the mystery that will make me glorified. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and faints and goes through coma and dies. He said, it abides alone, unprofitable. He says, but if it dies, it bringeth forth what? How do you produce much fruit in the kingdom? By your death. Hmm. Let me tell you, only dead men carry the glory. Only dead men carry the glory. What that means is you must come to a point where you die to your ambitions. You die to your aspirations. You die to your formulas. You die to the conditions you give God. Lord, I give you two weeks. If you don't bless me, you are not king of kings. Uh -uh. Two weeks will pass, you will not be blessed. You will say, okay, God, I give you one month. I've extended it for you. As if you are, you are giving God grace. And at the end of it, you say, Lord, you know what? Even if it's in 10 years, you don't bless me. I love you. You have died. 
You have died to those conditions you give God. Lord, I'm sweeping your church. You better be looking at me. Wipe my tears as I'm wiping the tears in your own house too. That is true. But if that is the reason why you are sweeping the church, you are wasting your time. Are we together? Death means losing nothing around your life controls your passion for God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not money, not lack of it. Not fame, not lack of it. Not ministry, not lack of it. You come to a point in your life where he is all in all. That's death. It doesn't mean physical death. But let me tell you, it can be painful because the process in the spirit with which a man relinquishes his will is very hard. No man gives it to God just like that. You can only give God permission to take it. For you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Let me tell you something. There are many ways to know a spiritual man. Prayer and tongues and rema are the foundational ways to know a man of God or a man of the spirit. The chiefest way to know a man of the spirit is through his cars. The testament of his sacrifice. The testament of his handing over the management of his life to God. How he trusted God for certain things and they did not happen. And he still said, Lord, you are glorified. That's spirituality. Not preaching. Are we together? You frustrate Satan. You've heard me say this. There is no way I know in terms of its, its highest level of impact to frustrate Satan than to give God glory in the midst of your pain. Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles on what it seems today. And though I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. That's somebody's condition in this place listening to me. But I don't know what to say, I don't know where to start. But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will sing And I will praise Even in my darkest heart Through the sorrow and the pain I will sing Sing it from your heart I will pray Regardless of what is around me I lift my hands to honor you. Because One more time. Help me. I will sing. I will sing. That's how spiritual men are made. I will pray. They defy circumstances. Their love for God is not tied to anything. Through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. And I will pray. I, will I may pray. cry, but I will still pray. I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true I will see Hear me You don't become a spiritual man When Mike is given to you You become a spiritual man When you can look at someone You trusted God for their healing And they died And you say Lord I'm standing in front of this grave And you are still God You challenge Satan Are we together? You expected five points. You went to the board and you saw four carryovers. And you know you must try an extra session. And you say, Lord, I won't pretend. I know I prayed. But Lord, I want you to know that you have won my heart. I'm too addicted. This is too small a reason to come in between me and you. And you're, you are promoted in the spirit. Because that is your death. God is saying, who is this that is calling on me? He said, gather unto me my saints. Psalm 50 verse 5. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let me show you how God brought us to where we are. 
it was never a thing of hoping for results there was no other plan b i never had plan b with god if it doesn't go well with him let me just die there i like esther she said if i perish let me tell you many of us have plan b there's one leg in god but you are hooking the other leg in case god disappoints you If you do not bless me, let the world laugh at me. If koinonia does not grow, let us remain a subject of mockery. But it will never, never, ever. See, change this, your anger and annoyance over God. Lord, I trust you. I've been serving in your house. If I... Uh, 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 spiritual men never get angry with God. There are men who have died. When you come to a dead man, watch this. When you are removing the trouser of a dead man, will he get up and say, stop? Huh? When you are removing the money in his pocket, no. That's how to die. If God says, son, I need your phone, you hand it over and say, where is it? All things. A man can have nothing except it is given to him. All this, our greedy lifestyle, is a sign that we are alive in ourselves. That's why we never see the attention of God. Listen. Whether God keeps his anointing in heaven or in you, he's comfortable because it's still the same thing to him. You are that yielded. It's like two stores of a man. You know how people do business. They can tell you, I have a branch in Kaduna, I have a branch in Lagos. Any one of them will give you the same result. Can God say, I have this grace in heaven, but I still have one on the earth. Go and meet that person. You will get the same result. As though you were praying to me because he's that aligned death one of the most painful but most powerful keys of carrying the glory you can jack yourself and claim i have the glory you will waste your time until a corn of wheat falls down and dies brothers and sisters hear me i tell you the truth and i lie not there is nothing god makes a demand of in my life that i cannot give him ask him you don't want to know the things God has demanded in my life. Anything you cannot give God is the reason why you will not host his glory at that level. If God tells me, give me koinonia, I will pack it up like a cloth, put it in a nylon bag and hand it over to God. Immediately, not after a meeting, immediately. If he tells me this is the last time you should be preaching, all the ministrations will be cancelled with an apology. You know why many of us die? We are the ones responsible for everything in our lives. So we die. He says, come unto me, all ye that are what? Weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Everybody say death. Say it. There are many people's training in the body of Christ. We don't teach people the mystery of death. And then they expect glory. The Bible talks of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Are we together? Yes. Romans chapter 8, please. From verse 18 and 19. For I reckon that the what? The constraints, that's what we call it. Let me be a sacrifice. What's the other part of that song? Just that part. My life to worship you. Just sing that part for me. That's the song in my spirit. That's the scripture here. Let this be a sacrifice. Let me dedicate my life to worship. Where you become a living sacrifice. It says, listen, hold on. For I reckon, I come to terms. There is no other way. You can choose your way. The prison is full of people who chose their own methods to life. Are we together? They chose to jump fence. They chose to point guns at people. That was their way. The Bible said there is a way that seemeth right. There is a way. It may be popular, but it's wrong. Let me tell you, the way of the throne is the cross. You will never get to the throne until you go through the cross. I know this is not an attractive message. Don't allow people fool you. The cross is the way to the throne. 
There is something that happens to you at the cross that qualifies you for the throne. The way to the throne is when you face Goliath. He does something to you. Whenever you pray for a throne, Goliath is coming. Until you qualify, you will not sit on that throne. I speak to you a mystery that makes men carriers of power. When you speak, it's as if heaven owes you a debt they must pay. Not everyone. Listen, the centurion said, for I am a man under authority. He said, I say unto one, go. I say unto one, come. Death. Not Rema. Not Greek word. Not Logos. Not Kairos. Not Kronos. Uh -uh. None of those things will replace true fire. The secret place. Where there is a testimony of death. Galatians 2.20 please. He said, for I am crucified with Christ. That's the realm. You have died to your ambitions. You have died to your aspirations. Whether you call me Pastor Josh, Prophet Josh, Apostle Josh, whatever. No longer do you have that appetite to do anything that is outside of God. Your life revolves around His will. His wish is literally your command. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Then he says, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Then he says, and this life that I live in the flesh that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not faith in the Son of God. The very faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Have you gotten to that point where you are dead to yourself? Look, you will not lay hands on the sick and say, be healed. I'm a Christian. Jesus died for me. Be healed. We keep mocking ourselves before demons. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. I see the scars in them. I see them pass through the cross. But he say, who are you? You just jump from nowhere and think because your father is a priest, a priest that looks like a herbalist, do you inherit that? No. Listen, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. Everything is given, but not as gifts. There are some things that are given as rewards. Unto us a son is born, but unto us, unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. And the government will rest upon the shoulder of the son. A symbol of authority. Are we together? It says, an heir as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors. God is challenging us tonight. Right? Anointed to reveal his glory. In the course of the series, I'm going to be teaching you something powerful about the anointing. I tell you, your life will catch fire. It's time for us to step into greater levels. There is so much God wants to do with us. Give him space. Koinonia, give him space. God wants to find expression. Let me tell you something. When you get to a point where you can speak over a man's life and change his destiny, you are really powerful. You are really powerful. Where you can use words to veto the limitations in men's lives. Who is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. He didn't carry cane. Michael, where are you? This wind is stubborn. He stood and said, Shalom. Shalom. The centurion said, Uh uh. I look at you and you are not representing yourself. You are under authority. You are a reflector of the glory of the Father. Huh? I am also a man under authority. I know how powerful my government is. On the strength of that power, I can tell one, go, and he will go. When you tell things, go, and they don't go, they are sending a message to you that you must admit. If you tell sickness, go, and it does not go, it is speaking back to you. Where is your authorization? Like passport, you are traveling out. You smuggled your way, and this custom stopped you somewhere. Are we together? You put your clothes in a bag with, with clothes and as you are smuggling yourself out, they trap you. What is the question they are going to ask you? They are not going to ask you your name. 
what is your passport your symbol of authorization what gives you access to move from one dimension to the other and if they cross check and find out that you are an illegal person what happens they deport you you are not even there yet but they send you back even if you cross over to another country one day when they catch you there what do they do they be, that's, there are many people being deported in this season because they never went there correctly they used some manipulations and they jumped and experienced power for two weeks that's why you think they are using charm it's not charm they didn't follow the right path so they must be sent back the thing that makes me fear god is that even if you are 20 years the day you decide to walk with him you will go back and start correctly god doesn't do double promotion you pass through every class one by one and write every exam in god's class 90 over 100 is not a everything he teaches is necessary for your future it's not like the way we are you can get here and go in god's class you you will clap for you for the ones you have passed but you will rewrite the exams till you pass there that's why 40 days became 40 years until they passed every course he was teaching them are we together we're going to pray tonight i'll stop here and we're going to pray god has been speaking to me about the things that he wants to do this is our year of multiplied um, grace and influence hallelujah god wants to reveal greater glory you already seen it happening in the testimonies and the rest but you see any true man of god does not want to rise alone are we together we must all rise together where our words become like the words of god the bible says the words of samuel was like the word of god when he spoke none of his word fell to the ground what a man what a man there are some of our family members right now we are the only reflectors of the glory of christ as far as they are concerned are we together we left many of our loved ones and some of them are practically on their way to perishing in every wise sickness finances spiritually but god tonight wants to anoint you and through this series he's going to be guiding you are we together so that he will anoint you i trust god that by miracle service this month some people would have entered some strange dimensions strange spiritual dimensions you can know something has entered your hand all this acting we keep acting do you know i'm anointed no you are not it should be very clear the anointing is like light there is light here if you ever have to ask one person do you know i'm anointed i'm telling you it's not there oh it should be very clear as clear as light is from darkness tonight we are going to pray but before we pray i want you to admit that you have limited the reflection of the glory in your life in many ways there are so many possibilities we should have entered as men of god as individuals are we together so it's very important close your eyes in one minute before we pray i see the presence of god strong already here I want you to just reflect in one minute on what I've said. Is my life giving God room to manifest His glory? How have I brought shame and disappointment to the name of God because I have bragged being a Christian? I've stood near sick people and nothing has happened. I prayed in my family. They have been mocking God, they've been mocking Koinonia. I dared them, but I prayed and nothing happened. pray lord things must change my christian life has been barren for too long i need an encounter a true encounter i'm tired of faking it i need something solid
Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in my life. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in my life. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in my life. One more time, shalom, and then we we'll pray. Shalom, shalom, Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in my life. Welcome the new dimensions in God. glory of God find expression in your life somebody is going to die because of it a day will come you will meet a sick person and there is no Joshua Selman there is no koinonia a day will come you will be desiring certain dimensions of his power a day will come you'll be desiring certain dimensions I'm here to charge you as you begin to pray certain things will begin to shift in your life lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit just pray in tongues kabata shabalarabalaba Shabra kata baradus, zebra kete ne barapata. Reflectors of the glory, carriers of a reality. Shaba barata barada balada bagada, zebra kete barada balada ba, rekete braba bada bala ba. My life must be a conduit. My life must be a reflection of your possibilities. My life must be a reflection of your wisdom, your power, your wealth, your might, your intelligence. My life must be supernatural in every sense. Make sure you're praying.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I need power in my life. I'm tired of a natural life. I know there is a dimension of power, true spiritual power that can land upon my life and make the difference. Lift your voice and cry. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Cry for power. Scatala There are giants on every mountain. It takes power to move mountains. It takes power to move mountains. Spiritual power. Spiritual power. Spiritual power. The unction. The unction from the Almighty that makes you supernatural. The unction. Cry, Lord, a release of power like the dew of heaven. I need power in my life. My life is too natural. My words are too natural. My business is too natural. My family is too natural. I cry for the supernatural dimension of my success. The supernatural dimension. I invoke the supernatural dimension of the equation of my life. We are still praying. Listen. Listen. Guys, listen. The Bible says, Know ye not that your body, not just your spirit, your God has been mocked too many times. There's no power in our lives. No. No. You pray for the sick, nothing happens. You speak, your words are empty. We keep mocking ourselves. God is going to touch somebody here. Now, now. All those things, we, we fool ourselves. Listen, we are going to cry. There is spiritual power, authentic unction from the throne. It can land on a man's life. It can land on a lady's life. And the difference becomes clear. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Lift your voice and cry. Lord for power. Lord for power. Lord for power. Unction. Unction. Grace. Unction, let my prayers command results. Unction, let my words carry power, carry change. Pray. Send it, oh God, like the dew from heaven. Send it, oh God, upon my life. I'm tired of an ordinary life I'm tired of an ordinary life That supernatural dimension Hallelujah Hallelujah Two more prayer points and then we're done Be sensitive now The anointing of the spirit Is going to begin to fall on people I believe that God is going to be activating things. It's a series. So we are still praying. But I want you to pray. Listen. Listen. We are going to pray. It's one thing to be gifted. But it's another thing for that gift to be anointed. It's one thing to be graced. Even your grace needs to be anointed. Brothers and sisters, we will mock ourselves. If we keep on this path. I cannot live a life without power. A powerless life everything ordinary everything your words are ordinary everything happens in your life there is no supply of intelligence beyond the intellect it's a terrible life we are going to pray now are we together as you pray I'm agreeing with you the angels of God 
are going to be walking right and doing things in the lives of people please i'd like you to pray and say lord the dimension of power that must land upon my life let it begin to land lift your voice and pray be sensitive as you pray mighty impartations will begin to happen as you pray fire from heaven land upon our lives unction from the throne oh receive it it's coming on you like fire like fire like fire Kaparatos kaba Embreketetetete Reketete kotos Pray, pray, pray Pray An unction Spiritual power For results Power For impact Power Lord I'm tired Tired Of an ordinary Christian life I'm tired of just being a follower of a religion. I am tired. I need power from heaven in my life. He said, ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power and unction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. When the power of the Holy Ghost is not upon your life, your Christian life will be frustrating. You will hardly get results. It will be a life of struggle. Struggle over everything. You will knock on doors for ages before it opens. But there is an unction. God never designed that we live ordinarily. He said there is this treasure. You are in every way spiritual. The last prayer point, and then I'll pray for us. Listen. Listen. You are going to pray and say, Lord, from my head to my toe, may it be saturated with the power of the living God. Let me be a literal walking bank of power. Come on, Koinonia, are you praying? Lift your voice and pray. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, power. Power in the morning. Power. 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 Kaparatakata. In my sleep. Power. On my bed. The power of the Holy Ghost. As I speak, a release of power. Pray. Lord, I need power. In my business, I need power. In my academics, I need power. Power to conquer. Power to break forth. Power to buy. Power to lose. Power to set the pace. Power to subdue darkness power to subdue witches and wizards power to subdue wicked men power to prevail over wicked systems fill me up till I overflow I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run over, fill me up, it's a prayer in your life, till I overflow. Lift 
your hands. I want to pray for you. All through this series, I'll be ending with prayers. Honestly, I want something to land on your life. Something that separates you. Something that sets you apart. There is an unction a man can carry. There is an unction we all need. Whether you are inside, outside, those online, participate. There's no distance in the spirit. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. And I want you to receive it with your heart. Honestly, I want something to come on your life. All through this week, after every teaching session, I, I want to jack your spirit back. Dispensers of authentic power that you have an unction that cannot be denied. Lift your hands. In the name that is above all names, I pray. everyone inside here and in any of the overflows and all those following us as I stretch my hands right now in the next one to two minutes there will be such an impartation father all kinds of graces choose it by yourself but right now I stand under this anointing receive that impartation everywhere 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 let God locate men Unction, unction, release of spiritual power upon your ministry, power upon your academics, power upon your spiritual life, power upon your prayer life. Shaka ta ta ta. It's coming on people inside and outside. Power upon your words, power upon your business, power upon your marriage. Power upon your body. Power upon every challenge in your life. I pray for you. Where things happen in your life at a natural frequency, let there be a transportation right now as I speak. Be carried in the wings of the spirit right now right now let the spirit of god take men take men be carried right now be carried by the wings of the holy ghost be carried by the wings of the holy ghost to a realm where you fly when others are walking be carried to a realm of encounters a realm of visions i open your eyes i open your eyes visions Visions, visions, visions. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Something will happen to many of us right now. The hunger that makes a man pursue the presence of God. Some of you, your hunger has gone down. You're about to receive a restoration. Right now, wherever you are, hunger, 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 hunger for spiritual things, prayer, hunger, fire, hunger. Oh, let it come from the throne. Hunger, hunger that drives you to pray. Hunger, every distraction in your life, I cast it away. Whether relationship, whether marriage, whether money, everything that distracts you from having a genuine hunger for God, I cast it from your life. Return back to the place of hunger. Take me to the place, the place you are. To. The secret place That's where I want to be Take me to the place The place you are The secret place That's 
where I want to be. I want to pray for your hands. Please lift them up. Something will happen to your hands that will change your life. Moses used his rod and threw it. And he used his hands to pick the rod. These hands are supposed to be hands of signs and wonders. But for many of us, there is nothing happening. No results. Just lift your hands. I stretch my hands. I make contact with every hand prophetically. Let there be transference of graces. Right now, in the name of Jesus, your hand from today becomes supernatural. Becomes supernatural. Becomes supernatural. I make contact with your hands. In the name of Jesus. I make contact with your hands. Receive grace. Receive power. Receive grace. Receive power upon your hands. Receive grace. Lay it on the sick and watch them rise. Use it for your academics and watch excellence. In the name of Jesus, let the healing virtue flow to your hands. Let the healing anointing flow to your hands. I release it from my spirit. Let the healing anointing flow right now. I release it from my hands to your hands. Right now, right now, right now. It's like rain. It will come upon you. It's time to heal the sick. It's time for the healing ministry to come strong again. I activate it. That healing fire. I activate it. That deliverance fire. Deliverance grace. The unction to heal the sick. The unction. Father, I pray for your people. Anyone here who came sick, let me just minister one minute. Just lay your hands where you're having the pain. I want to rebuke that sickness. I command that spirit of infirmity holding God's people. Some of you will start feeling a burning sensation go through your body. That's the healing power of Jesus. Right now I release that anointing. I command every spirit that holds your body captive to leave you right now. And I declare every sickness be gone right now. Let there be creative miracles. Every missing body part we put a new one right now. We change genotypes by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every pain, every headache, every migraine, whatever it is, every blood disease. You go back this week and check. You will find out that it's gone like, it will be like magic. It's gone and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. Next week I'll be teaching you the highest dimension of reflecting the glory of God is to reflect his resurrection when things that are dead come alive because of your presence you are walking at the apex of the revelation of the power of God every spirit that has tied the destiny of anyone in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I not only command that they let you go I command judgment upon them I'm praying this prayer for only two people. That's why the Lord asked me to pray. And those spirits must leave those two people now. You cannot come to a place like this and go back the same. No. Mike said it because God is here. I don't care what followed you. Please believe me. There is creative power. I pray for you. As you are going back, leave those challenges here. I want you to believe what I'm telling you. As you are walking out of this place, I said drop those challenges here. I forbid them from following you to your respective places. The only thing that goes back with you is the presence of God and testimonies. 
and supernatural power keep standing there are men and women here right now who need to give their hearts to the Lord you've heard me pray while you were lifting your hands the Lord began to speak to you about your salvation two sets of people I'll call them quickly those who have never given their lives to Christ I believe there are so many outside watching by the screen and then number two there are those who you want to make your ways right with God the truth is you love the Lord but somehow you've deviated from the paths of God and you're saying Lord I'm returning back home in two minutes all those people those giving their lives to Christ for the first time those rededicating themselves wherever you are don't wait for anybody to come before you start coming make your way to the front quickly I want to pray for you I want to agree with you that this becomes the end of every challenge clear the way for them don't be ashamed motivate them they are coming God bless you God bless you koinonia clap for them Please clear the way for those outside. There are still people inside. Make your way to the front. Come to Jesus. You have seen his power. He reveals his glory that men might believe him. He reveals his glory that men might be believe in him. There are still people to come. Appreciate them. They are still coming. Don't sit back at your seat. Allow the Lord. Give him chance to build your life from tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Put the devil to shame in your life today. Put the devil to shame in your life. God bless you. They are coming. The Holy Ghost is convicting them. Make your way to the front. Hallelujah. If there are still people coming, make your way to the front. It's not too late. Thank you so much. Those of us in front, lift your right hand and say this after me. Sincerely and passionately. I believe there are still people the Holy Ghost is speaking to to run and join them. If you are part of those people, God is speaking to you right now. And saying you had the man of God make your way please come out I believe there are people outside at least three or four people I'm seeing the Lord is speaking to and say you need to come and join them quickly come and join us don't be afraid the Lord is speaking to you you know it don't argue with the spirit make your way to the front all those in front here I like you to pray lift your right hand and say this truly from the depth of your heart hallelujah you are not reciting a poem this is a miracle happening to you say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart join them my dear I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me there's somebody coughing out something I'm seeing a vision someone is coughing out something I don't know what it is that I'm seeing I'm seeing someone coughing out something that devil must leave in the name of Jesus I'm seeing somebody coughing out hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.